someone who grew up in the heyday of muscle cars and pony cars, the 60s and 70s, it does my heart good to see these two cars here with us today. The resurrection of the Camaro and the Challenger is proof that all good things come around. I just can't deny the appeal of a raw and awesome muscle car. I love these things. I know it's politically incorrect these days to say you love raw horsepower, but it is so much fun. And I have here the Chevy Camaro SS. And what do you have? I got this, the 2016 Dodge Challenger SRT 392. Both of them are raucous at startup. It's great, it's glorious. It's, it's the sound of the gates of hell opening. It eats Priuses for breakfast. At some point in time, we have to figure out which we like better. I can see you're getting a little impatient, so let's stop twiddling our thumbs and go for a drive. Let's do it. We are driving a 2016 Camaro SS. I love everything about how this car drives, other than I do find the clutch pedal a little stiff, a little heavy. I think the automatic is probably the best bet to go. No. Yeah? No. I think so. I know, as a performance guy, that's heresy, but you gotta think of comfort. It's a very impressive package overall, mm -hmm. especially considering the price. All in, as you see it, it's $52,000. That also includes things like, well, you have the sunroof, you have the performance exhaust, that's an option. That's quite a lot for the price. It has kick. It has kick. This is strictly a two-seater. And it truly is a really, really good car. What we got here is the 2016 Dodge Challenger SRT 392. It's a great cruising car. Seriously. Absolutely. It is. I love the way it shifts. I like the shift mechanism better than in the Camaro. This thing just smooth, flows like butter. It's a lot more comfortable, I find, than the Camaro. Yeah, I have a lot more headroom, a lot more legroom. You can see the corners oh, yeah. of the car better. It's entirely visceral, yes. entirely visceral. It's all about the feel, the sound, the senses. When you're on the throttle, you can feel it through the seat, through the clutch pedal when you're shifting, through the steering wheel. It's just, this car is all about feel. It's all about old school thrills. I love it. Hopping into the Challenger from the Camaro, it's just, it's a lot more pleasant. It's a lot more, it's a lot friendlier for a car this brawny. Considering we weren't really testing these for performance, after all, you know, you look at their zero to 100 times, they're gonna be within a couple of tenths of each other. What we're looking at is how these cars compare as a day-to-day -day driver. So, what do you think? As far as daily driving is concerned, yeah, the Challenger is big, but it's a better cruiser. It's more comfortable, it's better laid out, in my opinion, and as big as it is, you can actually see out of it. So the Challenger wins from a comfort standpoint. From a performance standpoint, in terms of using the car day to day, I found it easier to live with. I found the transmission, it shifted smoother, cleaner. It was a more comfortable car to drive. I liked the Camaro for its performance aspect. I like the fact that it is really a serious sports car but there's only so much time you can spend on the track. Maybe if GM wasn't trying to turn the Chevy Camaro into more of a sports car than a muscle car, my answer would have been different. But I want old school muscle car thrills. And as far as that goes, I'll take the Challenger any day of the week. Absolutely. For Driving.ca, I'm Brian Harper. And for Driving.ca, I'm Nick Trajanis.